Listen to this. Listen to this sound. I don't know if you can hear it. Oh, you probably can't hear it. Oh, it smells so good. This is River Bend. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know. Whatever. That's River Bend. This is technically it's the first blend that I've purchased. <clears throat> um as I've said in another video, I bought three blends at once on my first purchase. And of those three, this was the first one I picked out. So technically, this is the first blend that I bought. It's called River Bend. It's a house blend from a local tobacco shop. It's an aromatic. It smells amazing. It smells so good. It's a... Uh, there's some chocolate in there. Um, there's some kind of a fruity... Like a grape or a plum, something like that. Um, when it's overripe. When it's, it's super ripe and soft, right before it starts to turn, starts to go bad. There's, there's kind of that kind of smell in there. A lot of chocolate tone, like a semi-sweet chocolate. Not like cocoa or, or even milk chocolate. Yeah, like fudge maybe. I don't know. It's, it's very good. Um... As I said, this is the first blend that I bought. I don't have a tray. I need to buy a tray for this kind of stuff. <clears throat> and I wanted to talk about it. I'm going through my impressions, my first impressions of the first few blends. And, uh, of course, that's going to carry on through all the new blends that I try. I think that aromatics hold this place of being kind of the training wheels of pipe tobacco, the entry point for a lot of people. And so, um, I got no problem with that. I've got no shame. I bought an aromatic <clears throat> because I knew that if it tasted anything like it smelled, it would be really good. And it does, and it is. I think it's pretty good. I've got one bowl left. I'm thankful. I'm glad. Because I thought I was going to use up the... I thought I was down to my last bowl. It's going to be a couple weeks or more before I can go pick up some more of this stuff. I've really enjoyed it. So... So let's light it up and I'll tell you what I think about it. This is River Bend from the local shop, House Blend. Yeah, again, there's like some grape. It's not quite grape, and it's not quite cherry. But there's a distinct deep red or purple fruit 
black fruit maybe kind of thing going on. Mixed with a chocolatey kind of thing. Now, what I'm noticing about this one is <clears throat> of the handful of blends that I've smoked so far, they, uh, how hot they're burning, how cool they're burning, whether you sip on them or get a big mouth full of smoke, all that brings out different tastes. It's not like a cigarette or a cigar is for me where I'm tasting the same thing basically the whole way through. This starts off with a certain taste or assortment of tastes when the bowl is full. And as you, you know, you're, you're puffing it, you know, like this. You, you get big clouds of it, and you're getting a certain couple of, of, of uh, senses there. And as the bowl goes down to the bottom, as you smoke more of it and it gets a little hotter, that changes. Um, I'm learning that when it gets hotter, you got to kind of just barely tease the smoke out, just kind of sip on it, like um, when it's closer to the bottom of the bowl. And you get more of the flavor there and less of the burn, less of just the hard smoke, you know, char taste or whatever. The interesting thing with this River Bend is it doesn't make a big difference. It's kind of the same up front on the top of the bowl with long draws and, and heavy puffing as it is when you sip it towards the bottom and, and hit it lightly. You're getting basically the same flavors, you're just getting more or less of them. And you're getting more or less of the robust, thick smoke kind of feeling in, in the mouth and the nose. Um, In other words, it's just kind of true all the way through. It's, it's, it's a fairly constant burn is what I get from it. Where the others change a lot. There's a lot more going on. Um, it's nice. It's nice that way. It's been the reliable one. You know, when I, when I don't want... When I want to smoke a bowl and I don't want to feel like I have to work at it a little bit to get something out of it or to figure out what I'm getting out of it or to make it burn the right way or, or not choke me or whatever. And then if I want to have a bowl and I don't want it to feel like work, this is the one I've been going to. If If all aromatics are like this, it makes perfect sense that that newcomers would go to this one first. Go to this kind of a blend first. Because there's, there's, it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. You get what you get. You know what you're getting and there's no, you don't have to work your butt off to get something pleasant, you know? Right out of the gate, you can sit down, smoke this stuff and really enjoy it. It's nice. It's very nice. Um, I had an interesting experience the other night with this tobacco. <clears throat> the it's it's more moist and wet than the other blends that I've got. This one is damp to the touch. It's almost like wet mulch is what it reminds me of. Um and 
in the other tobaccos, if they are that moist or close to that moist, or even not, even if they're if they're just a little wet, it makes them very difficult to burn, to light up, to burn properly. I'm playing around with drying some out for various lengths of time. I'm playing out with packing them, playing around with packing them in different ways so that you know they'll burn. The, the moisture will get out sooner. Uh, with Riverbend, I don't have to worry about it. Again, it's kind of like a turnkey tobacco out of the handful of blends that I have so far. It's real easy. It's very accessible, you could say. So, um, so the other night, I decided to walk the dog. Um, with my pipe. Oh, it's good. It's good. And, uh, <clears throat> I had not done that before. Because, you know, the pipe takes attention and work. And so does walking a dog. Even though both are very well behaved. Yeah, there's some other flavor in there that I can't I can't put my finger on. It's one of the beautiful things about this uh, this activity I'm learning is that it's so hard to put your finger on. You're it's you're experiencing things that hold some sense of familiarity but are also brand new at the same time. Like a really good song, right? That's what this is like. So. So I decided to walk the dog with the pipe. Um. Because I wanted to, I just, you know, uh, I wanted to do both at the same time, and time was limited. So I did both at the same time. And it was really windy outside. The temperature was cool, but not cold you know, thick sweater weather, and there was a, there was a cool wind that was a stirring wind, it wasn't coming from one direction or another, it was coming from everywhere, swirling around kind of, you know, uh, again, not hot, not cold outside, somewhere in between, the wind was a slower wind, maybe, maybe like a 10 mile an hour wind, swirling, um, not moving fast, but moving erratically. The kind of wind that makes horses act skittish, you know? Like a storm might be coming in the next hour or two. You can feel it in the air kind of thing. And I was worried, uh, to whatever extent you can worry about something like this, I was concerned that all that wind would mess with my pipe smoking, um, that it might blow the tobacco out of the bowl, 
or that it might make it burn really fast. Um, it might put put it out, you know. Like I said, I've, I've got a great dog. She's very well behaved, but walking her takes attention and, and at least one hand, you know. And so I'm curious how this was going to go with all this wind stirring around. Now, I've heard of something called a wind cap that you can put over the bowl, um, which I assume that is to keep tobacco from flying out, maybe reduce the amount of wind getting in. I don't have one of those. But I was thinking about it when we left the house, and I'm like, you know, I can see how something like that might come in handy right now. And the weirdest thing happened. I still can't explain it. That bowl of River Bend burned differently and better than any bowl of any of these tobaccos that I've smoked since, or before, before or since. I'm always in this shed, smoking, obviously. So the atmosphere doesn't change, it isn't changed, other than temperatures. But this swirling wind, this this slightly swirling wind around me, I mean, best I can figure that's what it was. I don't know. All I know is I'm walking the dog, and that bowl burned robustly. Is that a word? It is now. It was a robust burn, full, uh, but it didn't burn out quickly. It was a thick, full smoke um, that just kept flowing for the whole walk, for about an hour. Um, when I'm smoking it, what I've been doing is a combination of taking a pool and blowing it out like this. Right? Or, and this is so far my favorite way of smoking, is to just kind of puff on it, kind of puff, 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 and let it linger in the mouth and roll through the nasal passage and the mouth in and out. Just kind of uh, fill it and let it fill my sinuses, my mouth, and the pipe all at once. I try to keep the smoke of the air coursing through all three of those chambers, if you will, at the same time, and then uh, blow it away from me, you know. So I can sit like this. It's kind of be in the smoke, be with the smoke, sort of. So I can sit like that and do that for a while. But I have to keep tending to it, tamp it, play with it a little bit to keep it burning so that I can do that, right? That's kind of like an idol, is how it feels. You know, if pressing the, if, if puffing on it and taking a drag is like pressing the accelerator or revving the engine a little bit. Then this drawing in and letting it float through the different cavities and chambers, that's more like an idol. That usually makes the pipe go out like it is right now, right?
And on his walk, it didn't. Something about the air, I think. I was able to keep it at like that idle smoke kind of thing. And, and it didn't go out on me. It kept burning robustly and complete the whole time. Full of flavor. And it was so enjoyable. It was so nice. It was like maximum enjoyment, maximum pleasure for minimal work. It really surprised me. I don't know what I don't know what happened there. I don't know how that happened, but uh, it's got me wondering if you could duplicate that experience intentionally. You know, if the weather, if the wind is just right. So the next time the wind is like that, I think I'm going to grab another tobacco and go out, and just walk around with it and see what I get, see what happens. So, this river bend is very sweet. I think I've said about all I could say about it. I think it's a cordial cherry is what I think I'm tasting. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Like you get around like Valentine's Day or Christmas, those cherries that are covered with, they're encased in chocolate and there's that like syrup cream kind of thing inside of there. That's the taste that this river bin has to it. you know, in a sense. Anyhow, I love this blend, River Bend. I'll be going back to buy more of this.